All right. You want me to just join spec and I can spec you as you like go around the map? Sure, sure, sure. All right. Uh, I actually even go like over mids first, like yeah, what I'll I should be doing first. and like the team in general, kind of. All right, sure. So on mids, generally, um, as a soldier, I like to wait for a little bit of spam damage before I commit. Just kind of wait for some sort of opening, whether it be your roamers uh, distracting or your roamer's gonna bomb and you guys just go at the same time or there's some damage or whatever. So what I usually do, uh, I like to jump to like a spot like this at the start. From here you can spam across like this and you won't take too much damage. Then you can okay. reload and then you can do a, a deep bomb from there. Or you can uh, similarly come out here and then just jump up here and spam from here a little bit. What about Pride? Is Pride a good spot to like jump up to you? You could jump up here, but you're much more likely to take damage because you're a lot closer to them. All right. Um, but it, it could work. This is a mainly a good spot um, for like initiating pushes and for uh, like kind of holding the point when you already own it on defense. Okay. Um, but yeah, those are like my two go-to spots. The thing you don't want to do is like come up here and spam from here because you're going to take a lot more damage right here and it's gotcha. going to be a lot more crowded because if you take damage you're going to have to like sit here and your medic's going to be like really stressed out because what you're trying to do again is trying to be either far back or all in you don't want to be in between too much because your medic is going to have to heal you but your medic only wants to be healing scouts and demos pretty much on this map okay got and it mids in general so yeah i'd encourage you to try like a passive spam spot first and then bomb if you guys are doing like an early bomb, then just spam a little bit less, like maybe come here and just shoot like one rocket, then do your bomb up here or whatever. Um, some other things, other jumps you should know are... Um, uh, skip jump off this, to like get in to their cliff or bomb in deep, like either one. Okay. This is a... Uh, this is really good because a lot of times they can't see it coming if your teammates are pressuring over there. And you can get in like really, really fast and far doing that. So if they're like already getting pushed back behind here, you can just land, you know, anywhere close to them and just get usually an easy trade, um, an easy pick or whatever. Okay. Um, and then obviously that jump that I showed off that left wall. So those are like the two main fast bombs that you can do on this map. Um, but in general on mids, like, I usually wait for my roamer to call when he's pushing, and then that's when the pocket scout, who usually I, I start up here as pocket scout, and then I jump to, like, rock when we start pushing, and I start pressuring people on the point, and then I, what I like to do is also have our team all shift to this side, because on this side, um, you can assist with the flank, so when your flank is, like, getting aggressive, and pushing up here and your scouts are like climbing on this and your roamer is bombing around here or bombing from a single over here. A lot of times th what their scouts are going to try and do is... Actually, one sec, sorry. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna take care of something real quick. I'll be like right back, dude. Sure. Yeah, sorry.
All right, sorry about that. I'm back. Cool. So uh, what I was saying was on mids, a lot of time when your flank is going to be uh, getting aggressive over here. Okay. Oh, one sec. Uh, their scouts are both going to like rush over this way. So by putting your demo in this spot when your team's getting aggressive, he can do a lot more damage to the scouts generally over on this side, and you guys are fighting kind of together with your flank. <coughs> that usually works a lot better than having people on both sides of the mid, like some people running up here, and like if when people overextend this way, it's a lot easier for them to focus them down and just get a quick pick over there. I just find that you have a little bit more space on this side too, and you can kind of work together with your team. If my demo actually plays on this side, like shooting the scouts, that will shoot our scouts on this left side here. Uh, would it be a good idea to like jump behind or try and say go back on their China or wherever? Um, either one could work really, but I think it's kind of situational. Like if they're if they're kind of looking at you and they have people sitting like here in this angle, landing there might be harder. But or if they're if they're like really distracted, that's when probably landing here is a good idea because they won't look at you. But if they if they are like trying to chase you, probably going further behind and then coming back in would be a good idea. Okay. Um, it kind of just depends on how distracted slash weak they are. All right, cool. So we're like basically almost always going to have our demo pushing up on the left side that, yeah, with our scouts. When, when your team calls they're going aggressive, your demo shifts over and you guys push here together and you kill everything that's in this area. Okay. Um, until then, your demo can maybe be over here a little bit, but make sure he's here during that, that phase. So gotcha. All pushing together. Um, in general, on this map, you, um, I mean, you should always run gunboats on this map just so your med doesn't have to heal you much. But uh, you need to be like very actively getting health packs on this map. So if you're ever like half health or slightly below half health, just do a jump back and get the, the health pack and then come back in because it's really quick. Either side, um, usually this so this pack is like you're going to reserve for your flank or whatever. I mean, this one everyone else will get, but um, whichever one you're closest to, you know, get it. Uh, that way, your med's not wasting time healing you and arrowing you and can focus on keeping everyone else alive because the fights are like almost always going on on this map. So having your people that are actually fighting getting priority on heals is much more important on this map. Okay. So always, always be jumping back for health packs and coming back in. It'll be uh, much easier for your team to maintain he uh, health on everyone. Then, um, let's say uh, you're if you're like approaching the point, these spam spots are good again just to like get vision and basically you just want people to be shooting at you first before your scouts and uh, demo push in. So just coming up here and like spamming and pulling a little bit of attention towards yourself or jumping up to a spot like this. What you want them to do is shoot at you and then you just drop off of it. And then that, while they're shooting at you, your teammates should be moving forward. And then you can set up to like recommit or um, just like push together with them or whatever you want to do. But it, it, it needs to be like a sort of rotation of aggression where you like jump forward first, pull a little bit of uh, like attention to you, then your teammates get in while you're reloading. Then you come back in and push while they're looking at your teammates, you know? That should be the, All right. the What about my uh, my roamer? What should he primarily be doing here? Your roamer often will be playing like this flank side, generally. It's very important that he's like controlling people uh, get coming through here. And then when you have a pick, say, on their flank, he's like trying to push through. A lot of times if you're like just in a, like, uh, a push, your roamer, your roamer will start by like coming up here and then you can maybe spam a little bit and then when he calls he's ready to go he'll just bomb and take the risk and then you guys are trying to follow up on that um, okay or you know it just depends like how how set up they are if they're not very set up you can just get in fast like over here and start getting position but so you said like uh rotate aggression does that mean i want to bomb after my rumor so like my rumor will go in then i go in or do we want to bomb at the same time um, what I meant is just you you don't want to be like way ahead of your team and you don't want to go if they're already all, all staring at you. You want to kind of trade off like 
taking the aggro from them and then they look at your teammates then you go just so like you guys make openings for each other if your roamer's going to just commit immediately you should probably go on that but his timing shouldn't be like too early either mm -hmm. um, okay and when you're doing that bomb it should be one that's like more of a distraction than like a full commit you know something like where you go way behind or uh something like that instead of there shouldn't ever be a time where you're like insta dying before your team ever comes in, you know? So it shouldn't be just like you like just land right here. Unless it's a four man sack and their medics there. But um Yeah, okay. when you're approaching the point your your jumps, if they're just gonna be a distraction, should just be like away from them, kind of onto these side periphery areas on the side. And where you can get height and get back in. And you can even like come back here and get this health pack and then fight them again. Because any situation where the scouts are fault, like tunneling you and chasing you on this map is very good for the rest of your team, because you want their scouts to be like out of position. This is a very scout dominating map. Um, another thing that you can do while approaching is look for these like certain spam spots on top of the rock, is where a lot of scouts will sit, and your 30 damage rockets will really stack up. Like it'll make a huge difference for. Um, softening their hold so if you can just like whenever possible if your team's like not ready to push the point and you're like approaching just like put a rocket or two onto that rock and you will almost always hit a scout and it will it will add up and really help your team in getting in cool so all these like these perches that they'll sit on you always want to hit them or if people are like sitting up there you could do the same so yeah then your team will hopefully get in um the thing about this map, it's it's very much about controlling the point. Um, when you come in, well, let me let me back up a little bit. So, just in general, on this map, this map always favors the offense. They have faster spawns than defense. So, when you're on offense, you can play a little bit riskier and a little bit more aggressive. But the point where that ends is once you're about to cap the point, any deaths that you get are excessive. Or if you end up taking the point and like continue pushing, there's like a point where it's not really worth it anymore because any deaths you feed to them are gonna, you know, play into their advantage. So capturing the point, you really want to be disciplined about not over chasing and not like having people dying over here where they can't get help or overextending alone or chasing one v ones back behind house. You know, your team needs to play very uh, just grouped up on the point and. That needs to be their sole objective is point control. All right. So, what what would my positioning look like if we just have point control, assuming yeah. like even Ubers and all that business? Yeah. So once you're taking the point, um, you basically just want to have. Usually, a scout will be like forward spotting, like where they're coming, and then you you can play a lot of different spots. Up here is a good one because you can get good spam on the cliff and main, and then you always want to back up. Don't just sit there and like eat up like 100 plus damage. Just like get the vision and spam a little bit and then back up, jump away, whatever you gotta do. And then come back in when you're healthy and reloaded. Or you can be forward up here, spamming the same, and jump away. Um, you could even go all the way up here and spam from here and then jump away usually pretty safely. Back here, same thing. Just usually any of these high ground spots because what that does is it, it makes them look up at you, so your teammates that are here pressuring can focus anyone who maybe overextends to like rush at you, and it also just uh, makes sure you don't take too much damage in the hold, and you can get away. And if you do have an opening, it, it also sets you up to like, commit on it or whatever. Um, usually when you're holding, if it's even ubers, you don't want to like lose anyone for a force. You want to just take like a team exchange. So maybe... Uh, they'll usually push up this slope here. So a lot of times uh, you're gonna be ready over around here to Uber into them. The big thing about the Uber exchanges on this map is you don't want them popping their Uber when they're on offense, like anywhere past kind of this line because this is your territory that you own. You don't wanna be having to pop when you're back here to regain the point. You wanna stop them from even getting anywhere near it and keep them at this height disadvantage right here. So a lot of times if, they're, if their combo is walking up here or say their demo is like approaching right here, a lot of times you can just take the Uber right into them and get that, that frag on their demo or focus whoever's forward and uh, 
get them to pop on, on their height disadvantage. And then what you want to do when you're Ubered, or if it's an even exchange, is take the tail of the Uber and go behind them. Because that's going to create a lot of chaos and allow you to come back in and pinch with your teammates and get a lot of uh, kills there. You can even get their health back and all that. All right. Um, big things to note, though, you never want to use an Uber unless you're going to kill their medic. Because the medic is much more important on this map than on 5 CP because of the clock nature of the, the point. And you know it takes 40 seconds or so to build an Uber. So every time your medic lives and their medic dies is often going to like take 40 seconds off the clock for whichever team that is. So, so if you Uber in and you don't kill their medic, you're about to just get Ubered in on and you're going to lose the point and it's, you know, it's going to be uh, bad. So pretty much every Uber that you pop aggressively should only be used if you can kill their medic. Otherwise, it's not worth it because they get faster spawns if they're on offense and then they can just roll in with their Uber ad and if they kill your medic, then they're starting to get 40 seconds off, you know? All right. Uh, like for Ubers, actually, do you, since it's like such a scout dominated map, like, do you recommend like double scout Ubers to find their medic like faster instead of just do taking a soldier and a scout? Uh, I think soldier is still good on this Uber because you can bomb to cut off the exits, and that's a lot faster than having a scout. I think scout soldier Uber is still the standard on this map. Okay. Yeah, it's. Especially if their meds like kind of back there when you Uber, the soldier bombing in is really important to, to catch him before he leaves and do everything you can to make sure the medic dies if you're going to Uber. Um, but if their medic's like all the way back there, it's not worth popping because he's usually going to be able to escape, you know? So you really want to make sure every time you pop, it's when their medic is vulnerable to getting uh, caught or at least forced so that it's not just you at a full Uber disadvantage. Alrighty. And what that uh, kind of leads into is also the fact that if they have full Uber advantage um, and you're like forward holding or you're holding the point, you can afford in that situation to sacrifice someone to force them. And a lot of times it's going to be a roamer and he can, he can be set up in any of these spots like over here ready to bomb onto them or he can be set up on cliff for when they come through and then just like land on the medic or whatever while you guys are all spamming and trying to put out pressure. So you guys get the call where they're coming, you keep up the pressure, your roamer goes in, hopefully gets the force, everyone backs out. That way you're not losing your medic to their full ad or whatever. Um, all right. And then the other situation would be if you're pushing into them and they have it and you're at a disadvantage. So assume they're just holding the point. Um, Often what you want to do is just send a four-man sack, and what what I'd say you should do is just find a time on the on the round clock, um, and call call that time, and that's when everyone uh, that's when everyone should be going, is at that uh, at that time. So it should be at least at least five seconds in the future. So um, just announce a time. Everyone goes at that time. All four of you. Usually, uh, both soldiers, scout, and demo. Both your soldiers should be doing like super deep bombs, trying to land on the medic. Usually, um, just trying to get the force. Common spots their medic will be will be uh, on the cliff back here, or just sitting like kind of in one of these corners. So getting height above them is is very useful when you are doing those uh, bombs, so that your other players can like your scout can like run up on the ground. They're all looking at your soldier. Your soldier should usually go like a s maybe a second earlier, but if, as long as you guys are all converging, it doesn't matter. Your demo can also do a double sticky jump and he can get in really far and fast to get that uh, force off. And that's almost like guaranteed. Yeah. All right. Um, the only exception to that is if your medic has around 70 or more percent, then you should send five people instead because he doesn't need to be building. Your other scout, if you're 70 or less, should be in spawn building. But if you're at 70 or so, then just send all five because by the time you guys spawn, you can easily build up the Uber for your next push. Wait, so if they have Uber and you're at 70, you still want a five man? Doesn't that take a lot of like time off the, the clock there, assuming uh, they have the it, control point? It's, that's what, it's kind of situational. Like if you're, uh, if you're, if you have a big number or round timer advantage, that's when you can play a little bit riskier. 
Like, for example, um, another thing is, like, if you have three minutes left on the clock or at least two minutes, um, for, or you have a two-minute advantage, I mean, and they, like, just cap the point and you're, like, in overtime or whatever, you can afford to take a lot of risks because you're on offense now. So the We have the advantage. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's kind of an advanced thing, I guess, about the clock is, like, it, it, it changes what plays are worth taking depending on how much is left. So... Um, also, if it's like early in the round, maybe and you're trying to establish dominance, and you might want to like go for that that sack with 70%. I mean, there's it's still it's still worth doing because I mean, you want to get the force, and you it's better than taking an even uber exchange. So even if you're at 70, sometimes going for the force is still worth it with uh, five people. All right. Um, if you do say get uber, or your your med is at 70 plus percent, and you guys start getting picks then he can just commit off it, but otherwise just going for the sack is usually a standard thing to do. Um, other and notes we, about... Oh, go ahead. So we probably don't like assuming like everything is equal ubers, but they have the point. We don't want to even uber exchange into them. Usually not, unless you have like a significant number of picks. Like if you have like, a demo pick or uh, two scouts or like two other picks of some sort. All right. Maybe it's worth doing. But like then, then again, if like both teams have uber, then we just send our rumor or whatever to see if we can get the force. If, if you have Uber, there's there's really no disadvantage to sending more than one person. Like, up to four or five. Like, there's no reason to just do one-man sacks if you are if you have Uber on offense. Oh, you can okay. Afford, you can afford to lose everybody, and you'll spawn in six seconds, and you just repush with the full ad. So... The only time you do a single man sack is when they're pushing into you so that you can get the force when you have a uh, disadvantage. Alright. Unless this, the force is like, you know, served to him on a platter and you can just do it alone before you guys set up anything. But, yeah. Um, so the other thing to note about the, the suicide is... When you guys go in, it's very important that you don't stagger your deaths, you know? Because your, your, your objective is to go in and die for the force, not to, like, go in and live forever. So if you get you the force late, and you're alive, you just kill bind? You, yeah, kill bind or just commit to a fight. Okay. And try and make them kill you. Okay. Um, you don't want to linger and stagger your deaths too long, because it's just going to delay your next repush or whatever. Um, then some other things to talk about would be... Uh, Forward holding. So the best way to forward hold is to have both your soldiers and your medic on this side. Usually stuffing this doorway. Um, I like to have like my roamer playing a little bit more forward here, and then the pocket a little bit further back, so he has some uh, vision of main. He can spam that. Um, one ear scouts should be playing main, um, either up there or like down here spotting it. He can get the early call there and back out, and then you guys can shift your uh, spam over. Most important thing is to like get a call where their heels are. That's usually where the main push is going to come from. So if their heels are over here, then you start spamming this a little bit harder. If their heels are over here, then you can put both soldiers spamming this. Our in. demo should be getting up on cliff, and he should be putting traps all inside here. What you don't want your demo doing is only trapping this, because that is a like reaction time test that you it's not worth like risking your whole hold on, and they can also do multiple sacks or just rush multiple people through, and he can't kill all of them if he just gets on the first person you know, so he should be instead trying to prevent them from even getting through this this section at all, and just laying stickies all over here, spamming pipes in the doorway, and. Um, just kind of slowing them down or just deterring them from even trying to get through here in the first place. Then your scout, your other scout, can spot this. Um, if it if it seems like they're never pushing cliff, then this scout that's over here supporting your demo should rotate away and can support uh, over here. Or so that means like the demo is like the the strongest link in the chain here, ideally. Uh, yeah. I mean, because I feel like last season we played product, they'd always just kind of overrun our demo at Cliff here. Yeah, it shouldn't it shouldn't be possible if he's doing it properly. 
your demo most likely was just trapping this doorway, but if he traps like in here, I call it making a mess. Just like throwing stickies everywhere in here. <laughs> all right. You don't that, have to like really hide anything, I guess. Just yeah. You vomit all yeah, over the floor. Really, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just make like roadblocks everywhere where they don't even want to like deal with it. Because if they do, they stand here and they start shooting stickies. You start laying down more stickies and like throwing pipes or just start deading stickies on them inside here. And you get those kills in a choke instead of like as they run through the doorway. You know? Yeah. Um, so then, like I said, if, if uh, it seems they're just avoiding cliff because you're holding it well, then you can put your other scout over here to support over here. And then your demo needs to be a little bit more aggressive with watching this. Normally your demo just leaves the trap in there and when they start clearing his stickies, that's when he knows there's something coming. Um, and he can be kind of around here, so if they come main, he can rotate spam over there too, like with grenades. Um, then the other situation is if they run a pyro to try to blast your soldiers away coming through here, then that's when you rotate your cliff scout over and he will help you deal with the pyro. And then I leave my like combo scout or whatever just watching main? Yeah. But... Spotting main. Okay. Yeah, I guess that could be a distraction play for someone to come from main. Yeah. If you're uh, if you're even Ubers, uh, your medic can be somewhat close, and then you can pop if necessary. If you're at Uber disadvantage, you can still forward hold, but your medic should be a little bit further back, and maybe with that scout building near him too. And then that will also set up your roamer to sack into them if you need to force them or whatever. But your medic should be a little bit safer back here. Um, and then from the other side, breaking the forward hold. Um, usually, if the demo's holding cliff, I don't even bother, like, messing with that at all. And I usually will prioritize coming main, because it's uh, much less often trapped, and it's also much harder for him to relay traps on it. And you have a little bit more space to spread out, and you have this 90 degree angle right here to kind of, like, bust through and surprise people. So main is usually the easiest spot to get through, um, especially when they're usually putting their combo, like, right here. And from main, you can split both ways. So a lot of times, if you like come through main, you can jump up here and like try and get on their demo on cliff or something and get that pick to open it up. Or you can um, just like jump onto them over here to force them back. And then once you break through, then you're ready to you know, peek and spam and go for your sacks again. Or whatever. All right. You got any other uh, questions? Uh, oh, there is one other part uh, like that I should talk about is snipers on this map. Oh, actually, um, yeah. So our sniper has quite a few seasons of Platinum Highlander, and we want to use that. Okay. So. Is it your scout? Yeah, yeah. But our our roamer our roamer is actually off classing this season. He's a scout man. He a He's a scout man. I don't. Okay. I don't. I think our normal scout's better than him though. Well. Um, something we might want to play around with then is uh, having two scouts at all times and having uh, a sniper instead of a roamer. So it could either be your scout goes sniper and your roamer goes scout, or your roamer goes sniper and you keep both your scouts. Alright. Yeah, I'll bring it up with my team. Yeah. So when you want to run a sniper is um, either when you control the point and you're just trying to like make it very hard for them to push in without forcing. Or when you, um, or the, when they're holding passively and you're trying to uh, just push the point with and break their hold, you don't really want to run a sniper when you're going for like aggressive, like pushes, or when you're going for uh, like soft plays. Usually the sniper is gonna slow you down and he'll just get like isolated, picked or whatever. Or if they're holding like, if they're holding more aggressively. The sniper's usually not going to work. So I would usually discourage full-time sniper on this map and use it more situationally. For like offensive pushes and shit like that? Or if you're set up on defense and your player that's sniping is like spawning or like knows that he can run back to spawn before they get in. Okay. Set up up here. So where should the sniper be playing and how do I deal with a sniper if they're running a sniper? Yeah. Yeah, so your sniper... Uh, usually the best spot is here. You can see just about every entrance, um, but you know any of these angles work. Like this, you can shut down the flank a lot. If you're going for like your first early pick, a lot of times peeking up like here can work. 
because a lot of times they won't see you coming, and you can hit anyone up on uh, you know, the rock or on cliff. But usually if you're just trying to like control the map, this is the, the spot you want to be. And from here, your medic can also heal you quite easily. And you guys can like, you know, be set up on these perches to bait anyone for your sniper, or your scout can be like chilling back here for anyone spawning or whatever. All right. If you're forward holding, you definitely don't want a sniper. If you do have a sniper, then don't call the forward hold. Oh, and also for the forward hold, uh, only do that if you're six up. If you're down one player, don't do it, because every every spot needs to be held in order for that to work. Um, so if your demo's dead, definitely not. If you don't have both soldiers, definitely not. Maybe the only situation is if you're down a scout, you can maybe pull it off because you have enough spam um, and he'll get there maybe quick enough before they get through. But you definitely want to be six up um, unless you have like some significant advantage in numbers and it's going to take them a long time to push. Um, so if they're running a sniper, usually the best way to break the sniper is to kind of think about what they're sacrificing to run a sniper, and it's almost always going to be a flank player. So overwhelming their flank when they're running a sniper is usually uh, your best bet. And so we just bring our heals to the flank? Um, not necessarily, but you could. Yeah, you could just like heal your roamer and just have him like just try and get through as aggressively as possible with your scout following him. And then meanwhile, you're doing like deep bombs. Um, your priority in that situation is actually to kill the sniper above the medic and the demo and everything else really because until the sniper's dead your medic and demo are really gonna have a hard time progressing at all so a trade for the sniper is a good trade yes okay sniper is the most valuable pick if uh, he's set up um so that's when like this bomb might be good to like put pressure on him but the best way i've found to kill a sniper is to actually uh get people coming around this angle and just shoot him in the back right here or flank him over here and shoot him in the back. Or, you know, you come up here and just, uh, just bomb onto him or whatever and kill him. So that's why it, the flank is very important, is because uh, his angle is a little bit worse for hitting the flank, and uh, they usually sacrifice a flank player, so it, it kind of weakens the hold over here. So playing extra aggressive over here is, is going to be kind of the key to breaking that. Um, and you just want to be very mindful of the sniper sight lines. Like, the sniper can can barely see this, but it's not the best angle for him. So this can be a decent spot to get in. Uh, but the sniper has like full vision of this entire side right here. So pushing up here into a sniper is usually very bad. Coming across the top of cliff can also be a, a good way to get in because the first time he sees you is if you start peeking right here. Um, other things I should mention about the cliff is uh, a lot of times if you like close to getting uber or down a pick or two on defense, you can rotate people up on the cliff and play from here or rotate all the way back around. Like if your medic's weak and like gets the pack, then you can reapproach from up here. And a lot of times it'll make it uh, easier to avoid spam getting back into position to fight the point. Okay. Cool. So I think that covers just about everything. Do you have any other questions? Uh... I guess like primary primary focus targets like obviously like number number one would be like the the sniper in that situation as you mentioned I guess yep. and then and then of course their medic and like shutting down their demo man is pretty huge too yeah. right yeah. but like I instead we map. okay go ahead uh, but so I mean go. like instead we want to focus on scouts I guess right this map honestly anything. But soldiers is almost equal value in a push. Scouts, demo, medic. Medic is maybe slightly higher in value just because of the the round timer centering around medics. But it is definitely a scout demo map. So scout picks are super valuable. Uh, demo pick is super valuable. And then yeah, they're all they're all like equally valuable. I'd say except soldiers, you don't want to you don't want to go too far out of your way to kill a soldier. Okay. Really kind of expendable. And not going to be their central holding power. All right. So, uh, I guess like the last thing would be like common trap spots because I feel like I've been dying to traps. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So most common trap spot is probably right here, right there. Then you'll start seeing them here. This trap is kind of sneaky and common. Like 
I have these little holes right there. Mm -hmm. um, then, like, more advanced traps will be, like, inside house right here. Uh, you'll also see this trap pretty commonly right up there. And then, this is sometimes trapped. You can actually clear that by shooting a rocket right there. It'll blast it away, so you can hug the left. Um, another one that will kill scouts is right here. So when people are climbing on this little piece here. Um, on here, you'll see trapped. And then for like fast bombs, you might see stickies up there. Okay. And then uh, on the point, sometimes around these logs. And that's about it. I want to say. All right. Cool. I guess I guess that's it then. Uh, yep. We got a. I'm playing against uh, my old team on this map, so I really want to win. Yeah, that's man. why. Yeah. yeah that's so. Yeah. It's a grudge match. Man. Not. I mean, we like. People just got busy with work and things, so like I didn't leave them under bad conditions or anything. I just want to beat him <laughs> like more than other people to like I don't know prove myself that I've improved or something yeah I don't know it's like a personal thing yeah. but uh yeah all okay, right so if you get um scrims or if you have another match before that that you want to review just let me know I should right. be available um tomorrow I should be available and I mean you can just find a time whenever if you uh just let me know in advance all right cool yeah we'll do Thanks again, man. Take care. No problem. See ya.